Oh, so sorry, I didn't see you there. Welcome to CS61C's lecture on synchronous digital systems, woo! Great to have you back. Let's jump right in, we're gonna talk about switches. So, this is the picture you've seen before. This is the layers of abstraction that we talk about in old school machine structures. This course is called Machine Structures and as well, the great, idea in, great ideas in computer architecture. So this talks about the action happens all around the middle, the ISA, the instruction set architecture. We kind of work our way down from the top and we kind of work our way up from the bottom to, to teach you how a com complete computer works. And so we'll continue to do this kind of going from the bottom up. This, these lectures are starting from the bottom and working our way up. New school machine structures, it's a little more complicated. Um, you've got a warehouse scale machine, which is up into, broken up into computers, and that computer has multiple cores. In one of those cores, you have a processor. That, that's the kind of piece of a processor of a core. Execution units, functional units, memory. And then within that is main, within that is the logic gates. So when we talk about the parallelism on the left, we're mentioning there's a lot, we're gonna eventually, at the end, by the end of the year, teach you all five of these. But for now, we're gonna teach you the first one, which is parallel hardware descriptions. When you say and, bitwise and of A and B, 32 parallel AND gates go and have, the output has another 32 bits. So it's a 32 wide AND gate, um, bitwise AND gate. So how do you even build that? How do you even think about that? Probably you can imagine how to do that, just put 32 ANDs together, but if you, as you get more complicated operations, we'll teach you how to do this in these series of lectures. It's gonna be kind of cool. Again, here is the kind of new school way of thinking about, it. another way of looking at the layers of abstraction from the languages to the top, to the circuit levels at the bottom, and we're gonna do everything below that. Everything below the ISA line we're teaching in these series of lectures. Um, this particular one is STS, and then we'll get there and we'll say, well, okay, now we have blocks, I hand it over to Bora, and Bora's gonna now take it over and talk about how to then take those blocks and build a running RISC-V computer. That's amazing. So by the end of this, you're gonna have a running risk drive computer to run the machine code you compiled, assembled, and linked down to. So this connection day is gonna be a really special day, and I can't wait till we get to that stage. 621C is a special course for that reason. So we're talking about synchronous digital systems. Let's, let's kind of decompact that and decompress that, just understand what those words mean. Synchronous means you've got a heartbeat. You've got a heartbeat to the system. That heartbeat is your clock, and that clock operates probably nowadays in the three or four gigahertz range. Back when I was coming up, uh, it was 100 megahertz and then 200 megahertz, and everyone kept saying, oh my gosh, three, can't wait till it's 400 and 500. Then we, when we hit a gig, oh my gosh, a gigahertz, what can you imagine? So four gigahertz means four billion times a second. That clock is going one, zero, one, zero as a square wave. Pretty incredible, pretty incredibly fast. Um, Digital means, you saw digital when we talked about analog to digital conversions. Um, digital means we're gonna take the beautifully, wonderfully real world analog values of voltage and current and quantize them to be a zero and a one. And that's the idea, that's what a bit comes from. So when current is flowing, we've got a one. Current is not flowing, it's a zero, pretty simple. So we'll think about that and talk about that actually by going to the lowest level. So let's actually talk about First, logic design and then switches and kind of the basics of that. If you were going to do this at home, you can, by the way, do this at home with a, a bulb and a light the next slide or two. So in the next series of several weeks, we're going to be talking about how to build a processor. We're going to, you know, we talked about how to compile and link, assemble and link down to machine code. How do we even begin to think about building a processor that can run that code and actually execute it flawlessly? I mean, flawlessly, remarkable. It never makes a mistake if, ever, if all the pieces work. I have a working RISC-V machine that should work forever. Amazing. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna start at the lowest level, hardware design. Um, it's great to understand what this is. It's, I mean, it's nice to be able to, for the same reason that 621A is great, you don't have to worry about how memory management works or how anything is, you know, what the runtime really is below the line. Maybe you do a little bit. And then 621B, we unpack that a little bit. We teach you how still memory management is covered for you, but you need to know what the size of the, bit. you know, this is a float, this is a double. You need to know that. You didn't need to know that, certainly. Didn't need to know it at Python. You could know it at Python, you didn't need to. As we get lower, as we continue to reveal the layers of the onion, it's great to not just stop at the ISA and say, well, somehow hardware does this thing, I don't know how it does it. It's great to actually understand what's beneath the hood, to be able to optimize, to be able to say, oh wow, that's how I can optimize the cache or use parallelism in different ways, or be able to know what the limitations of a bit are. This is why this course is so wonderful, revealing all the layers behind it that were all abstracted away from you in other courses. 
So what, what are processors good at? What are processors bad at? What can they do fast? What can't they? So avoid the slowed things and optimize for the fast things they can do. Um, there are more courses beyond this, 150, 152 are courses you can take beyond that. I encourage you strongly to think about that. Um, and there, there are other things you can do with other than just take a processor from the store and use it. You could design your own processor. You can design custom hardware for some task you need. To be able to understand basics of, of hardware and logic design helps you give you those tools to be able to build that, build that hardware. Pretty cool. You, you, walk, you, walk and you walk a little taller once you learn this material. Like, wow, I could actually build any machine. Yeah, you actually can after these courses. It's pretty, pretty cool. So very basic. Let's say you know, a little bit, we're going to walk really slowly before we start to run later. Implement a simple circuit. I think I did this in third grade, where I had I folded up some aluminum foil and I had this and I had a light bulb from my I had a I had a flashlight. I took the light bulb out and I had a I had a, a, a battery and then I literally taped the battery to this side and I made a connection. And so we're going to actually start to use some language that will can help connect this to the material a little later on. So we're going to see. I have this circuit. This is a battery. Let me actually use this and give, give you a little bit of a thing here. So this is the symbol for a battery. That's pretty cool. Um, this is a symbol for a light. And this is the symbol for a switch. Okay, so I've got my simple circuit I did when I was in fourth grade. And the idea is we're gonna consider that switch open to start with, and we're gonna close it then. When I close it, it forms a full circuit. And you probably remember this from early you know, experiments in, in, in science class, you have to have a closed circuit for current to flow. You can't have an open circuit. So a closed circuit, that means there's a, there's a way for a current to flow around that. And current, you can think of these electrons are flowing from the battery, they go through the light, they get the light excited and they flow back and they flow back to the inside. And once you, only when you have that, that, that circuit closed can you have any current flowing and have that light go on. So when A, that switch, goes to set to one, we're gonna say it's closed. I now have a closed circuit, and now I have the light goes going on. If A goes to zero, by the way, we're gonna call that also asserted. When I assert A, so assert means turn it to one or close it in this particular case, okay? So when I assert A, light goes on. When I unassert A, blink, I open that, that circuit, that I open that switch, it's now an open circuit. Now there's no way for current to kind of have a loop anymore. And because of that, the light goes off. Okay, so we're gonna say that the brightness of Z is connected to A one to one. So now, can you actually wire some circuits to do some logic? You can, and you could have done this in fourth grade too. What if I had two switches and I lined them up in serial? This is the first picture is in serial. Well, I've got two switches here. You might think to yourself, when is there a closed circuit? When can, when can there, if there's a light and a, you know, a battery and a light as part of that loop, when is there a connection? If there's a Z, again, this is just replacing that switch with this two here. This is showing the battery and the light anymore. Well, you can see that I only have current to be able to flow when both A and B, I could have said this to a fourth grader. They say, yeah, when A and B. So they're already thinking about kind of the logical sense of it. They probably don't even know what a truth table is, but you realize they're only a closed circuit when A and B are both asserted, closed. So here's Z is A and B. All of a sudden, just thinking about switches connected to our Boolean logic. It's pretty cool. Now, it's still a single bit, but it's pretty cool. And this is wiring them in parallel. So I don't care whether current, by the way, current doesn't either. Current doesn't care whether it goes through one or down the other one through A or through B or through both. Currents just happen to get from, from left side to the right side or from right side to the left side. So this is a connection. Wiring them in parallel gives me the OR gate, the Boolean, one bit Boolean OR gate. It's closed, there's a path if A or B are closed. That's pretty cool. So already we're seeing a connection between our switches, our very basic switches that again, you could wire at home with some aluminum foil and a battery and a, and a light bulb from your flashlight. Although they're now LEDs and so I don't know if that still works, but you know, maybe you can connect it, connect it to the leads of your flashlight. And so your flashlight's still going, but you're connecting out here and making some switches out here. You could do that. That'd be really fun to do and I'd love to see Please feel free to post on Piazza with pictures of yourself doing that. That'd be really fun. So anyway, here's switches to Boolean logic. Pretty cool. Let me just give a historical note before we close this, this set of lecture, this lecture off. Um, in the early days, folks just build ad hoc circuits and they were like, oh, look, look what this does, and look what this does. And then they say, wait, there's kind of an Andy thing going on, and there's kind of an Ori thing going on. This is the early, early days. It really wasn't until Claude Shannon, uh, people, consider Claude Shannon the father of information systems. 
his master's thesis, so he was a brilliant, you know, brilliant scholar, and his master's thesis made a connection between transistors, the thing he was working on, and this mathematician back from the 19th century named George Boole. There's a picture of him on the bottom right. And he decided to call it Boolean in his honor. He made that connection and said, you know what, there's really some Boolean natures to it. So the word Boolean came from that connection between George Boole and the work that he was doing in transistors. It's pretty cool. And we arrived, and we realized through that connection, we realized now we can use mathematics to do amazing things like hardware design, minimization, um, Boolean, Boolean algebra models of circuits. All these things will teach you in these series of lectures. And that connection was again made by Claude Shannon. Pretty cool. We'll see the next lecture where we talk about transistors. See you then.